You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. So if you're a fan of the podcast, you're going to absolutely love the book. Slow Living, Cultivating a Life of Purpose in a Hustle-Driven World is now available wherever books are sold. Buy it for yourself, your children, your friends, and your neighbors. You can get all the juicy details at stephanieoday.com forward slash slow living book. Trust me, this is hands down the best 20 bucks you'll ever spend. Hello, hello, Slow Down Society. Steph here, and we are on episode 155 of the Slow Living Podcast. And today we are going to talk about burnout. Um, burnout is real. <laughs> and if you are feeling burnout, if you are feeling overwhelmed and frenzied and frantic, um, this episode is for you. And we're going to talk about how to apply all of the concepts that are taught in the new Slow Living book, which is Slow Living, Cultivating a Life of Purpose in a Hustle-Driven World, which is now available everywhere. Books are sold. Buy them. Uh, The holidays are coming. This makes a fantastic gift. Um, Yes, I sound like a broken record in that I would like for you to buy the book, but I really would. Um, I think the more people who actually read and absorb this information, the better. And the way the book is outlined is it's essentially broken up into three parts. And that is the success formula, which is mindset plus action plus consistency equals success. And a lot of times people are in the mindset that I am feeling overburdened. I am feeling burnt out. I am feeling overwhelmed. How on earth can I wrap myself around the idea of slowing down because there is too much to do and not enough time to do it? So that's the mindset part. That's the shift that we are really kind of circling and highlighting and focusing that if you continue to have that mindset, that is what leads to burnout. That is what leads to feelings of being behind and it feeds your anxiety. And so we talk a lot about that, but you can't just sit around and hope and dream and pray for something to be better. You actually have to spring to action and do something about it. And um, we're going to talk today about how to get yourself out of the hole of being burnt out and um, and climbing out of it. And we do that by utilizing the five steps of slow living and um, then applying it to all of the components of the peace pyramid, which is completely and totally laid out for you in the book. If you want it deeper with coaching attached, that is what Simple Shortcuts to Peace is all about and my one-on-one coaching. But I really do lay everything out for you in the book. And we're going to highlight some of those things today in this uh, 20-ish minute or so podcast episode. And then the third is consistency. That is doing the thing that when you're in a good mood with your mindset and you laid out your action steps, then you do this in a consistent way. But just like the shampoo bottle, (laughs) wash, rinse, repeat, even if you don't want to do it. That's the tricky part. That goes back then to mindset. So it's mindset plus action plus consistency equals success. Sometimes we have to get up and go to work. Sometimes we have to tell our kids, this is it. This is life. We know you don't want to get dressed and go to school, but suck it up, buttercup. This is what it's all about. What happens is when you are in this rut, and you don't feel hope, and you don't feel optimism that things will get any better. That is what feeds the the kind of overwhelmed burnout feeling. So deep breath in, deep breath out. Wherever you are, 
you are okay. You are listening to my words and chances are, hopefully, you have enough money in the bank that you know that you're going to be able to put food in the fridge. And you know that push comes to shove. If you need help right now, right here, you could call someone and someone could come in and and talk to you and help you. My hope is you are not completely and totally all alone. And I want you to really kind of pay attention to your support network and, um, and realize that when you're not alone, there are other people out there just like you having these same feelings. And sometimes when we start comparing ourselves to others, we think other people have the secret sauce and they've got it all figured out and they never feel anxious. They never feel overwhelmed. They never are on the brink of burnout. And that's not true. You can think of the most successful person in the world. Everyone has all of these thoughts and feelings. And what I would like for you to do is to kind of embrace these thoughts and feelings and and know that with a little bit of hope and preparation and consistent planning and consistent baby steps forward, you can get out of the rut you're in. You you can do this. So um, there's a metaphor of if you, if you kind of fall into a hole or, or a well, and depending on your age, maybe you learned about baby Jessica. And uh, when I was little, I was so concerned that I too could fall into a well like baby Jessica. Um, but but please trust and, and hope that if you're in a hole, um, the first thing to do is to kind of acknowledge, all right, I'm in a hole here. Um, this is it. I am in a hole. I can't go any deeper because I am in a hole. And and then start looking around for the hole and and seeing if you can find a ladder or or, or something to try and and get out of it instead of just kind of curling up and and becoming one with the walls of the well and just deciding, well, this is it. I guess this is it forever and ever. That that's that feeling of hopelessness. And if you listen to this and you've read the book and you've started to apply these things in a continuous way and you are finding that on your own, you can't get out of a hole. I want you to reach out to your healthcare provider. I want you to be honest. Um, Maybe your hormones are out of whack. Maybe your vitamin D is low. Maybe your thyroid needs checked. Maybe you need more B12. Maybe... You just need to realize you're in a hole and you have to acknowledge it and and ask for help. Um, We live in in this fun society where everyone's got a computer in their back pocket. Reach out. If, If you're feeling isolated and desolate in your own town or community, there are other people online that you can reach out to. We have a Slowdown Society Facebook group. Reach out to them. Pay attention. If your own healthcare provider isn't giving you the answers that you would like, find someone else. Um, find someone online um, to chat with. There, there are doctors all over the place. And I'm not saying to to buy black market drugs in any way. So please do not <laughs> think, oh, Steph just wants me to drug myself with some weird doc in a box. No, find someone legitimate. But, but you are not alone. And, and if you're listening to my words, I want you to have hope and optimism that someone somewhere out there too has had these same thoughts and feelings and life circumstances in which you currently find yourself and they have found their way out of the hole and, and look towards that. Okay, um, burnout, overcoming burnout episode 155. We have been circling around this for the past 154 episodes. Um, One thing I like to do, and readers uh, write in and and message me and tell me that they've gone back 
through past episodes and scrolled. And if something just kind of jumps out at them at a topic, they think, oh, okay, this is the universe. This is God telling me I should listen to this today. Do that. Don't think you have to do anything in a particular order. Um, but listen and feel uplifted as often as you can. Um, because if we're lucky, life is long. And wherever you are, you're not destined to be there forever and ever. Um, one last thing. I, I've got some messages from advanced readers of the book. And uh, and one is just, as an author, it's just so gratifying to know that there's real people out there reading and listening. Um, but someone messaged me. She was an advanced reader and part of the launch team. And she said, I finished the first chapter last night and I love it. Your writing is so beautiful. I can feel your passion in it as I read. I love, love, love it. And I can't wait to read more. So that is amazing and wonderful and thoughtful. And then uh, uh, someone messaged me in Facebook and she said, I can't wait for the world to get their hands on your slow living book. Last night, I read the part about five to nine, journaled about it and what it would look like for me. And I woke up on my own at 6, 10 a.m. And I did so much for myself before anyone else was even awake. It felt amazing. Your book is going to be life-changing for so many people. And that's what I hope. My hope is for you that there is a before and an after and a really thick highlighted delineation between your before and your after. And um, wherever you are, you're not behind. You're not doing anything wrong. But if you're feeling burnt out. I'm going to give you some really strong action steps today that I want you to start to do in real life on purpose for yourself to get yourself out of that burnout hole. Um, so first off, and we've talked about this just now, is, is paying attention to the here and the now and not dismissing your thoughts and feelings. Um, a lot of times people talk about toxic positivity and, and slapping a smile on your face and, and this kind of like fake grin of everything's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm at my wit's end, but it's fine. It's fine. No, it's not fine. So, so acknowledge that and do not dismiss your thoughts and feelings because they're there for a reason. So I want you to really um, poke at them and figure out the, the down and dirty why. Um, Pay attention to any unnecessary tasks and commitments that are contributing to these feelings of burnout and overwhelm and simplify your day-to-day -day routines. Do not do things for other people when you are in a state of overwhelm and burnout. Start protecting yourself. So, so step one of slow living is obviously always to declutter the things that aren't working. Um. You do need to know where you're headed. So if you are in this feeling of overwhelm and burnout, probably you just want to stop the feelings. Um, stopping the feelings, though, could be detrimental to your long-term trajectory in life because stopping uh, a frantic feeling could be uh, taking shots of whiskey, and that's not going to help you in any way. It could be... Um, uh, mindless scrolling and distraction and numbing. And that too will not get you from where you are to where you want to be. So I want you to really kind of daydream of what, uh, if you had a magic wand, what it could look like to have your your life be sparkly and, and glittery. And that's where you point your GPS to. And you're right. It's absolutely hard to imagine things can be better when you are feeling burnt out and overwhelmed in a rut. That's why when you're in a good mood, I want you to kind of make a playlist of, okay, when I'm in a bad mood, I can do these things to help distract myself um, and be productive that aren't going to be detrimental to my health. So maybe getting out in nature, going for a walk, doing some yoga, putting on some, some rock and eighties music and, and rocking out for a while. Um, dropping to the ground, doing some push-ups, um, running in place, doing jumping jacks, anything to distract yourself um, 
and and springing into action um, will be helpful. Sometimes the best thing to do is to take a nap, um, and that too helps, but it's not going to be detrimental to your long-term health and well-being. Staying present and mindful as much as possible. So when you slow down, you end up seeing things that you wouldn't necessarily see before. So so sometimes what helps is to change your position. If you're stuck at work and and you're not feeling it, um, get out of your desk chair and and go S- sit on the other side of the room for a while. If you can go outside, um, pay attention to it. I had just read an article about one of the reasons why smoking uh, took off and was so highly addictive was one because of nicotine. Um, the tobacco engineers really knew what they were doing to hook people, but also it was this five to 10 minute brain break throughout the day where you were doing something just for you. Uh, you're going outside and and you're you're out so well. You're I guess you're not necessarily breathing in good air if you're smoking, but you're still outside and you're doing something just for you. So uh, at work, depending on what your office looks like, go use the bathroom on the other side of your work campus. Um, get some steps. Do something just for you. Um, fill up your teacup with a new flavor and 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 breathe in the the aroma of the tea and kind of the steamy water. Do something for you that will immediately slow down your heart rate, your cortisol, those those swirling thoughts. But if you're really focusing on on breathing in the the smells and the sounds around you in childcare and in in schools. We teach kids mindful breathing by having them put their finger out and they want you to smell the flower. So you're taking a nice, big, deep inhale in, and then you're blowing out the candle. And a flower and a candle is not the same thing. So suspend your disbelief there that that's a little weird. That's how we teach kids that the blowing out is just as if you're blowing out a candle. So you breathe in the good and then you blow out the bad, the stress, the anxiety. Okay, baby steps. I want you to try as much as you can to nurture the relationships you have with people who fill you up and really protect yourself and put up boundaries from the people that don't fill you up. Um, and, And just pay attention. I want your relationships to uplift you and not drain you. Your health, um, there's there's got to be a way that you are sleeping in a proper way, hydrating yourself in a proper way, and in eating um, food that um, continues to nourish your body instead of, of draining it. And it is tempting when you are feeling burnt out and overwhelmed to reach for food that will numb that out and make you feel better. Um, But maybe do something um, that feels that way that isn't going to give you long-term health problems. Um, Maybe look into a weighted blanket. So instead of uh, becoming one with the couch and a pint of Ben and Jerry's because you feel cozy and weighted down, maybe you actually weigh yourself down with a weighted blanket. Um, I was at, I think we're at Michael's. Yeah, I think it was Michael's or Hobby Lobby, but they have now these weighted stuffed animals. And so you can put a weighted stuffed animal on your lap and, and pet it. Um, obviously, if you've got your own cat or dog, um, pet your cat or dog and feel their weight and feel present. And while you're doing so, um, run, run fingers through the fur and just kind of be magically in awe that this other living thing needs you and um, loves you unconditionally. It doesn't matter what your hair looks like or what you're wearing or if you have spinach in your teeth, um, your your pet will help keep you grounded and in the here and the now and will love you unconditionally. 
Finances come up an awful lot um, when it is feeling as if you are in this hole and feeling burnt out and you can't climb out. And um, and financial awareness um, and paying attention to that is really important. And, and finances are in the bottom tier of the peace pyramid, which is time management, health, finances. Um, depending on your feelings of burnout, I really only want you to pay attention to that bottom level, um, which is, again, time management, health, and finances. So declutter on your calendar what's not working. Health, get sleep, hydrate, back to the basics, protein heavy. And then finances. Um, if you are in a hole or you're leaking money and you're in debt, um, stop. Put a pause on any on anything and everything um, in order to, to dig yourself out of the hole. I am not a financial advisor. Um, I've read an awful lot about it. Um, personally, we have dug ourselves out of debt. Um, there are a lot of resources out there. Don't buy things. Um, rent from the library. Pay attention. Ask for help um, in a free way. But trim your budget as much as you can and, and take advantage of the help that's out there. And, and do not feel like it doesn't matter what you do. It's not going to be good enough. And you're always going to be in a financial rut. Or, or feeling this way. There has to be some sort of measure of hope and optimism that you're working towards, a glimmer of it. Um, otherwise, you really will feel in this dark and lonely place. Um, and again, if that's you and you don't see any sort of glimmer of light and you feel um, kind of desolate and alone, reach out to your primary caregiver and see if there's um, something that you can do to help alleviate those feelings and um, and provide some hope and optimism for yourself. Um, the, the next episode I'm going to talk about is uh, on cleaning and decluttering in, in depth, because a lot of us, when we're feeling frantic and overwhelmed, we focus on external things and decluttering your physical space. And now I need to become a minimalist and I need to only have 12 things in my capsule wardrobe. And I'm going to hyper focus on that and hyper fixate on this one thing. And I get it because it is so gratifying to, to have a before and an after of a cluttered space. But please know, like we talked about in uh, the last episode, that there are plenty of people in the world with a decluttered garage and attic and still don't feel fulfilled. Um, so, so doing it, giving yourself purpose is important, but the happiness and the feelings of wonderfulness is not on the other side of a decluttered like linen closet or spice drawer or anything like that. It can feel great in the moment, um, but you do have to pay attention to all of those thoughts and feelings and, and feelings of anxiety and inadequacy and, and kind of just really poke at them and, and pay attention to them. Okay, um, so this was episode 155 on burnout. And I, I want to drop a few other episodes that might be of help to you. We've talked about this in the past. Um, again, by, by the book, Slow Living, Cultivating a Life of Purpose in a Hustle-Driven World really does walk you through this step-by-step. Step. I hold your hand. Um, you are not alone in any way. And then once you buy the book, um, let me know. Um, email me. Send me a screenshot of your receipt, and, um, and I'll get you a, a, a thank you gift. And then also we do have the Slow Down Society Facebook group and you can talk about it and meet other like-minded people. Because if you are feeling alone, um, there's over 500 people in that group. Reach out to them because uh, we're all doing the same thing at the same time. Okay. Past episodes that may be of help. 47, Overcoming Overwhelm. 49, Quiet Quitting. So, so Quiet Quitting was in the news quite a bit. But quiet quitting is a great way 
to do the things that need to happen at work and in your life, but then also finding a way to do the things that light you up and and pay attention. So it's it's literally putting boundaries on yourself so you're not going overboard with people pleasing and and doing things that you don't need to do. Um, 88, reprogramming internal dialogue. I walk you through how to kind of shift those intrusive thoughts in your head that aren't helping you. 90, adrenal fatigue. Um, Adrenal fatigue is when you are in this fight or flight mode constantly and your cortisol levels are super high and they're just firing constantly into the fact into the point where you are in this overwhelmed burnout feeling all of the time and you can't get out and so a lot of it is hormones and um and sleep and proper nutrition and hydration but in that episode 90 i walk you through the steps of adrenal fatigue and then i also talk about a few resources that have been beneficial to me and my coaching clients and they might be of help to you as well and then um i'm also going to drop um a blog post a former blog post that i've written in the show notes and it's called um how do i know i'm on the right path and I think a lot of times this is what the issue is with burnout is not knowing the steps that you're doing will work. And so you're just consistently going through your day, going through your life, but you don't know, you don't have a crystal ball, you don't have a magic eight ball, and you don't know for certain that you're on the right path. And so within this um, article, I, I walk you through how how to collect evidence that you actually are on the right path and it will all be okay. And and some of it is faith and and optimism and hope. And that's not um, maybe scientific. And and we are in this kind of time frame in society where we want data and we want science to back up all of our decisions. Um And that's interesting because part of slowing down is deciding on purpose where you want to go. And so I absolutely understand wanting the science and the data to back up all of the action steps you take. But sometimes you just do need to go within and follow your gut and your intuition and and have faith and hope and optimism that you're a pretty amazing human and you make wise choices and wherever you are now you've you've done a whole bunch of choices and decisions to get you here and i love you unconditionally and i think you're amazing and i think you are wonderful and i'm so proud of you okay pretty people i will be back next week in your earbuds i think you're amazing have a great day do you have a slow living story to share Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living lifestyle and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.